this resource page of things that you know some some of the stuff I've watched myself and think are very good and some of the stuff I think uh has potential even if I just from reading the headlines and stuff like that just from like my own experience giving posters and stuff like that uh personally I think there's like two kinds of approaches to a poster mm -hmm. developing it and the presentation because those go hand in hand uh, when you are making your poster, you have to have an idea of who is the audience and what it is for. Specifically, if your poster is going to be entered into like a competition, then you do need to take a little bit of a different approach. Uh, mostly, it needs to be even more general than you would expect. And then if your poster is just, you know, you're going to one of those big ones, you're going to be one of a thousand or 10,000. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at you, SFN. Uh, then, you know, you can get away with doing some like avant garde things with your poster, just going wild. Um, mostly because, like, the handful of the people who are coming to your poster are coming because they already looked you up. Uh, so it's like the difference between a small, intimate kind of thing, whether or not it's going to be in a competition or not. I do find that the smaller ones, they are more likely to be at competition stuff. Uh, but versus the huge crushes where you are next to a bunch of people doing very similar things, people want, you need to have an eye coaching poster. You have to have like, it has to be a different mentality when you're, when you're doing it. So the, the first resources I have here are like videos from BioRender, their learning hub. I really liked these first two and I haven't watched this one but since the first two were very good I'm like okay I'll throw it on here um it goes over like design specifically in flow these so like if you have time to watch it and you really want to have like a top-notch visual poster I, I would do this for sure watch it the tips for poster figures a lot of are very similar to when you're making regular figures so like if you're like making anything in a document, I think this is always good as well. Um, so with that, I just a little bit more background. So when I first started, I was doing posters in PowerPoint. I know a lot of people still do it, but I will tell you that it took me maybe more than a hundred hours just to do one poster. And yes, I'm very meticulous. So I would zoom in and then make sure everything was the same line and there was the exact same width between everything. Um, but it got very, very tedious. So that's actually why I moved over to LaTeX. And now you can do it in Overleaf. So you don't even have to have it installed on your, your computer. Um, I was pleasantly surprised that there are significantly more uh, templates than when I started it. I'm not going to age myself. I look young. You guys can continue to believe that. Um, and so they now have a bunch of different templates that you can look at and kind of decide if you want to do that or not um, in both Beamer and text poster or text poster. This shit is this stuff. Staku is new. Before, I only had the Beamer poster template. So uh, the, the big difference is this is going to probably be more uh, picture friendly. Uh, so I haven't even explored that. But I think for sure, if you're thinking of uh, playing around with something and you're familiar with LaTeX or just want to like explore new kind of poster ideas, this would be a good eye. This would be pretty cool and creative uh, approach. KJ, is there like, um, I guess like Beamer versus Ticks? Is that like, I guess like, what does that mean? Like, could you point out the difference or? Oh yeah, so Beamer eh, is normally for like slides and stuff. So like anybody who's working in LaTeX and has made like articles, I know Leo has already gone over like doing your journal articles in LaTeX. That's just plain article format. The Beamer one is what you would do for presentations. And so when somebody modified the Beamer style, they modified it for a poster. Just it's, it's similarly as if you were making slides with um, uh, PowerPoint where you have a bunch of slides versus one slide. It's the same diff. Tix 
is really a platform for making like vector figures. So people don't do it very often anymore, um, but you can make figures with just code. Uh, so, and if you're doing it in LaTeX, Tix is the library you use. So I haven't played around with this newer Tix poster format. I'm more familiar with making like point by point diagrams. You could even make very like intense um, vector figures as well with the Tix. Or if you're using like Inkscape, um, you can export your Inkscape into this text-friendly uh, uh, format and then pop it into your LaTeX documents. So those are the big difference. Like Beamer is pretty much your standard like PowerPoint. Tix is really more of like making images. Um, so I, I'm very interested on how they expanded it. it. Maybe the nodes and stuff. It has so many cool... Uh, features with different arrows, different like, like, if you're making a diagram, it's very good for like general overview figures and diagrams, because uh, you can input like little organoids and stuff like that. But I, I will say that this is not for the light of heart. Uh, it is a huge learning curve, uh, because you are just doing it with text. Uh, so you you move something and then you render it back and forth. Any, any other questions on, on that? Um, so I'm guessing yeah. that the Beamer is the, the easier one to get started with, or? I think Beamer is the easiest one to start with. Um, but normally, uh, ticks poster, if there's good documentation, the real thing is you're not actually like, you're, you're using a template and then you're just okay. adding it. So someone it's else like, has already done like the hard, the hard work, the yeah. hard part. Yeah. Or the, the real technical part. <laughs> the, the technical part is when you're reading it here, because this is using this newer text poster format. So it's got all these different classes you have to play with. Uh, and that can be like overwhelming. Uh, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, but normally if you just Google the package, you can get a nice manual, uh, pack, go to the package documentation, and then you can, if they're good ones, they'll have nice documentation. Uh, and that's normally how you get started by reading these things, and they'll have like blocks of code, and then they'll tell you like the differences you can change to make things different and how to, to the basic uh, variables for calling and stuff. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not so familiar with this one because I, I, again, it's a little bit newer from when I started and I normally just use my own ones over and over again. Cool. <clears throat> so, um, when I started, I actually liked this template a lot, and I'll kind of explain why. Uh, one of the key things you want to have when you're making your poster is a highlighted block of text that if somebody reads it, they know exactly what your tech poster is about without having to read the rest. So having this objective here is really cool. It's not an abstract. It is it is like a very brief, very brief, um, higher level summary. So it talks about the impact with a very little background. So the impact is the most important. Like if you're thinking about grants, that significance portion, this is getting at the significance of your work, being able to tie whether or not you're doing basic science or if you're doing something that's clinical or easily translatable, being able to tell people why what you did matters and here's why is like the first bits here. And that's the objective thing. And then you have like your main bullet points. So what do you want everybody to take away from your paper uh, or your, your project? 
that is summarized here. And like, if you do like take nothing from this, this is the most important. Um, because, you know, some people are just going to glance, they might have 30 seconds to a minute, they should just be able to read this, understand what you want, and everything is hunky-dory. So, this is difficult. I understand that, like, hey, summarizing your work where you've got maybe, like, like I don't know, 25 supplementary figures, it's got five main points, it's a huge amount of work. You spend a year on it and you have four bullet points to summarize. It's it's difficult, but just think about like how would you talk to your auntie or your uncle, somebody who's not in science, for people who have aunties and uncles in science, like think about it, like your grandma, your mima, or whatever. How would you explain it to them? Uh, but you don't have, but you could still use so don't use too much jargon. Uh, whenever possible, even if you're at like a conference where everybody is going to know everything because every just it you will be surprised at how much easier it is for people to understand it, even if you are at such a high technical po place conference. So limit your jargon when possible in here and just really hit the key points like X, Y, and Z why we did it, this is important for X, Y, you're looking at cancer, you're looking at health disparities, you're looking at schizophrenia, and then the main points, and this is true for software, uh, like what are the highlights of the software and the advantages? Outside of that, you can really go like anywhere. I personally do not like the huge blocks of text here, uh, if you have this much text, it's very boring. If And even if your own paper doesn't have that many like overview figures or whatever, just make one. Um, I know I say that with like ease, but you should just make it. Um, so here's an example of one of the a portrait basics that I did here where I'm talking about that Kadate nucleus story. It's got highlights here, it's got everybody's name, and then the objective is the same thing. It's really just one sentence, and then it hits all the highlights, and then it find, summarizes it by why is this important? You can take your abstract and edit it here to like make it go faster, uh, but essentially like you want people's eyes to go straight to this. This is not... Uh, I, you try to have as much pictures because most people are going to look at the pictures and then read what you end up having is the figure captions. It's a very nice trick for if you have, you completed your paper, just grab the main figures, you plop them in here, you put the figure captions in there and you're pretty much got your whole, your whole uh, presentation uh, and poster presentation. Um, now, I moved away from doing PowerPoint because it's so much easier to align things it, when you're using this kind of plain text style. Um, I'm just kind of go over this Beamer and the, the package we're using here is Beamer Poster. Uh, so Generally, most posters are in landscape. So telling it the orientation is how I got it from being landscape to portrait. And for this conference, every poster was supposed to be portrait. So that's why I had to flip it. And then you can make it any color you want. Um, this is normally in the style, but putting it red versus blue or black. Uh, it's very straightforward, and I like that, like, you can pretty much understand what it's talking about with, okay, this is the title, this is the body, this is the color I want you to be able to see in the alert, and this is the background. Uh, so it's using this syntax here, the exclamation point and 10, that's for uh, um, OPEC to see. So if you want it to, to so like, like, let me show you here. We change this to 50 and then recompile it. it might take a minute. Suddenly the background is going to get much darker. Um, and so 
is essentially what you're doing is you're changing uh, this background image here. And it's uh, for, it, that syntax works no matter what you're doing. That's gonna Jay, suck. Can you yes. make the font a little bit bigger? I can't see it very well, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So this exclamation point is what tells it that you're doing OPEX, uh, the tra translucent stuff. So how either how uh, transparent the the uh, picture is going to be. And I changed it from ten to fifty, and so you can see it's really highlighted red. You can't see it well, which is why it's better to have if you're going to have a background, it should actually be quite opaque. Um, so this is a three column, uh, and these are pretty much just your, oh, are you doing a one column or a two column or a three column width? It helps controlling the width. And then I like this here because sometimes you'll have a poster and they're like, actually, you need to have a very specific size for it. You could easily change it to that width uh, and then it re, re, uh, a recompiles. It's not the best. Um, you you have to fix like spacing and stuff, but but it's so much faster than if you were doing it in Word uh, or like the PowerPoint. Which I mean, you've got to resize images and you've got to re move stuff around. This is more like oh, now the column width has to be a little bit different, uh, or I need to adjust how much space is between our columns and stuff. The, these are the those kinds of things like how much white space do you want how much margin do I want between this nice big line and the next thing that's just for fitting your stuff in here uh, reducing that top line margin uh, I this is one of those things where it's very good to have like well <laughs> commented code because otherwise you might not understand how to use it so So the reason why you, you want to use one of these versus some other thing is just because you can literally take the same kind of format, change up the code, and then readjust it. Instead of doing 100 hours, it now takes me like a day or two, a day, instead of like a two weeks to update these. And the best part is you can make sure the margins are the same between everything. And you're like, oh, you know what? If one margin is a little bigger than the other, does that really make a difference? To me, it does. Like you can notice it. Um, if if you're just doing like a, a poster just to be doing it, doesn't it's not going to be a competition? Then sure, go ahead. Uh, I'll notice, but maybe nobody else will care. Uh, but for the competitions, like these little things can matter because it makes it more visually appealing. How much space is it? Can you see? this information from about five feet to 10 feet away. Um, is everything visual? What? How good is the sizing? It's sometime, sometimes hard to see when you're making this because you have to zoom in to make sure everything looks good. Uh, but the idea is that like, if, if the size is like this, you're probably gonna see it. Uh, and, and so that's why I suggest it. Now, the one other thing that I also like to do nowadays that I wouldn't have done maybe five, 10 years before the uh, advent of preprint is to have your QR code for your preprint on the paper. I also have a personal website, so this is a networking thing. Uh, I think uh, we already all had that personal website. Putting that on there too is good, especially if you're trying to network and all conferences is really just a networking event. Um, just like as a like aside, uh, but this is nice because it reinforces that, yes, this is not everything your project is about, but it is the highlights, it's the main bits, the stuff that you want people to take away. And if they want to know more about the methods, they can go here. Uh, now, if you have a method, that this is a, a good way of cheating on not having a huge detail of methods because methods are where you're going to get a lot of dense text. Um, so, um, yeah. Also, I want to add, like, 
Leo kind of like encourages us to also post the posters online um, to Louis speaker deck. So then you can have a little QR code that points people to where they can access your poster again, if they want to refer back to it or, um, you know, then use that to maybe like read your preprint or get more information. But when I've been at conferences, people like the QR code to download the poster. So I would recommend doing that as well. Oh, that's a good idea. I have not done that before because I don't you normally put it on the slide deck, but I might do that now. Now, because um, it would be nice to be able to download posters that are really good, and then you can go reference it again. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, if you are a familiar with LaTeX, just moving things here is is pretty similar. Um, and the the learning curve is once you've done one poster, the rest of the posters take significantly less time. So the first one might take you maybe a week, but then the next one using that same template, it it takes you know maybe a, a two days, and the next one might take you a day. Uh, so th that's why I like I recommend using these kinds of like plain text generators that can render the poster, and you're not having to move things over and over again. Now, when I was doing this, I also happened to see that there are some packages you can do it in R, uh, which would probably be easier for people. I cannot vouch for any of them, uh, but uh, the idea is very similar. In fact, most of them use um, LaTeX underneath in the engine. They're just using you know the Mar Markdown and then generating the poster with the underlying architecture of the text LaTeX. Um, so you have that standard one that I was showing you guys before. Uh, the more uh, newer versions where they put this kind of one thing here and then have um, just the small amounts here. This is the one I think that you're not going to win any competitions with this, but uh, if, if you want to try it out, then go ahead. Um, the idea is, I, is good, but I just think that it's not very visually pleasing if you're going around uh, in the conference. That, that's personal. But. So I added um, the links here for people who obviously are is going to be more familiar with a lot of you guys. So this is going to immediately uh, make you be able to do what I'm talking about and like having your information and then generating in a poster instead of trying to use words. And I found this this relatively nice uh, to kind of like tutorial that talked about it so that like it walks you through how to use it, like the template personalization, which is key. Uh, key uh, so that you can go just straight from day one, like installing this package, uh, doing using it in our studio so that you get that instant rendering. I don't have our studio on my computer so that's why I didn't do this for you guys but I think it's pretty this is a pretty good layout for trying it on your own because you could still take the stuff I'm talking about in LaTeX but you can just use like our studio to work it and you can do pretty much whatever you like with it and I, I thought that was nice um, and then for yeah yeah Actually, I used poster down and R markdown for posters, and it works quite well. And then you can customize adding CSS, CSS you know, and uh, yeah. So it's really helpful for me. It was really helpful because I know how to use uh, R markdown, and I didn't have to learn how LaTeX. So. Yeah, that's why I added it here because because you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <thank> you. <laughs> I actually use the font awesome, but in LaTeX. So I, I, I do appreciate font on the awesome font stuff. Um, I was, when I was looking at it, because I wanted to be cons uh, completionary, they also have a very, this, I don't know how to say it, but high down, they, where it's not just posters, but like if you're writing a dissertation or, or uh, like a, a paper, because actually when I was, I decided to write my dissertation in LaTeX, that's actually how I learned to do LaTeX. If this had been around when my dissertation was around, I probably would have used this instead. 
but like it sent pretty nice uh, and they have specifics for posters and it uses that same stuff where really you're using our studio and under the hood latex and i thought this one actually might be using poster down like porting in poster down and just with its own specific styling so this one also had a little tour tour the website that has everything because this is this package i think is being currently uh, maintained i can't not sure about locked the poster down which is why i wanted to add this one too um since that poster down hadn't been updated for like four years. And then here's the one, the little vignette uh, about using the this one with uh, the poster. So it's the same thing in that conven convenient kind of format where you're in uh, our studio and then you're just using our markdown, which I think more people are going to be more familiar with. You can switch to landscape, portrait. You can use that hashtag better poster, uh, which I still think is debatable, but you could still use it if you want. And, and then of course you can add the citations in the bib text format, which we're using for law text, reading it in uh, and other stuff. No, so I can't vouch for this, uh, but it, the the yes pretty new so i thought i would put it here so that people have especially for this community would be able to just not have to have that long kind of um learning curve and could just start making a poster in this kind of nice way uh, that i was describing yeah. so that's pretty much just I wanted to highlight. Uh, there uh, are a handful of articles that are really good. Uh, even though this is old, uh, it really hits the purpose of things I was talking about, uh, about like being able to define what this is, your nature of your work, and being able to sell your work. They say 10 seconds. You don't actually have to have 10 seconds, but like this, having that elevator pitch that like the idea is that if you're in an elevator with a CEO and you have to pitch yourself, the same with the poster, 60 seconds for uh, most of the audience is all the time you're going to have. And then you have a five minute and then you have a 10 minute version of your poster. The 10 minute is really somebody who's come there specifically to see it and they want to hear the whole thing or it is not actually what you would have for your poster presentation for judges. Assume if you're being judged that you should be using the five minute version, okay? Um, if it goes over five minutes, that's fine, but you have to plan for five minutes because people will ask questions and that will get you to your normally 10 minute block. Uh, and really for, for like judged posters, Practice is key. So um, be, and I think that was like one of the things here at the bottom was like practice, practice, practice. Uh, but so I had a handful of these things that I thought were pretty good because they summarized like just the headings. They summarize everything uh, that like, I, was, I didn't have when I was doing this, but things that I learned uh, going over and like things that I have seen with feedback that uh, people really enjoy or really like. So, and then I found a handful of other ones that pretty much say the same thing. Um, but if you want to be reinforced, forced with it, so some of them say a little bit of different other things, like kind of helping you figure out how you want to map it your your poster. It's not something you just go to the draw uh, to to open up a file and then start. You normally should like either electronically or by hand map out the figure, the flow chart, and how it would look uh, in just a small piece of paper. Uh, because if you can do that, then it helps you think. And like the biggest part is editing and practice. 
So, so unless like other people like have like questions, I, I I'm doing this because I have to make a poster, and I was thinking about it, and I was remembering uh, when I was going through some mentees about how they had never done a poster before. So it's brand freaking new. Uh, so what things that I think are important to to developing your poster. But also, like when you're you're doing, you're developing it. Do like you gotta be. How is a nice way of saying this? You should be. The poster should be so pretty that you look at it and you say, "Dang, okay." Th that's how good posters should be. If if you're looking at it and you're like, "Oh, you know," if there's any time to be. And the selfish is not the word, but the one is the word where you're super judgmental about something, about appearances. It's it's for a poster. It's like, is it a little janky or something like that? And then like fix it uh, because you can't uh, you can cop, copy and paste. Uh, so that's all that I had. Uh, Thank you, Kajer. Or, yeah. Uh, I have a question. So can you add like, if you have like CSS added to, to your template and, and then, you know, so having those values, you don't, you don't have all the time like to customize, you know? So, uh, so most, so the CSS is the style. Mm -hmm. It's got a different name in LaTeX. It's a dot sty file and so you load that in uh, i share the the styles that i use for posters in one of these things here um it is similar to css it is written differently um if you're not familiar with latex it can be difficult to understand but it's very similar in general so like you're telling thing, like you are telling it, you're defining colors so that you, if you wanna change the color, you just use a new name. Like you can use the RGB, you can define it based off of like color names. Uh, you're doing things like basic palettes and stuff like that. How to treat like specific kinds it is very, very similar to a CSS. And then like the backgrounds here, how you want entries for bibliographs. So th that's the general style. It, it even has a style for like the thickness of lines and spaces and whether or not you want to have a circle around each one of your boxes, uh, mm -hmm. frames. It was very customizable. Thank you. Which each one is. You just have to be careful. It's like this particular style is telling it the sizes and stuff, but you can redefine those in your text. And then this one is, is doing the more general colors. And this is a very specific uh, theme that you can probably just get out of the box and, and work with that. 